very warm welcome to our online carols in the cowshed. I'm here at Boydell's Farm with farmer and owner Kylie Threadgold and I'm Canon Janet Pickles, the agricultural chaplain for the Diocese of Chelmsford. So Kylie, can you tell us about the normal activity at Boydell's Farm? Normally, uh, we milk sheep, uh, and there's a sheep dairy, uh, supplying a cheese maker and a yogurt maker, and then we do a lot of school visits and general farm visits. It's not only COVID, it's been the weather as well, we've had a very wet winter, so we've got a very dry spring, which has had a massive knock on. Um, COVID, uh, cheese sales slumped, and uh, so it was a tourism. It didn't happen for a lot of the months, so we are back to the and of course, at this gate, usually on this day, we stand here welcoming around 200 people to Carols in the Cowshed. Some of those people live locally and some travel from a long way away, especially for this service. We have a very loyal band of people that, that come along. But that travelling always reminds me of the beginning of the Christmas story. Mary and Joseph had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be registered. And it was at that time that Mary was expecting her baby, the baby that we know as baby Jesus, God's son. We're going to hear of that story now from Luke's Gospel, and then we're going to sing our first Christmas carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. In those days, a decree was issued by the Emperor Augustus for a registration to be made throughout the Roman world. This was the first registration of its kind. It took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. For this purpose, everyone made his way to his own town. And so Joseph went up to Judea from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to register at the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of David, by descent. And with him went Mary, who was betrothed to him. She was expecting a child, and while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. And she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them to lodge in the house.
Uh, so, so we're dairy sheep farmers, so these are predominantly uh, Frieslands and Macorns. Um, quite seasonal animals, so they don't actually milk all year. Uh, we're due to start lambing in a couple of weeks' time with the first batch. These ones are due in February, uh, so they'll start coming in now, ready to keep a closer eye on them. As with any animal, you do need to keep an eye on them uh, throughout the day. Um, when we're milking, it is a, a long day, it's an early start. And obviously, lambing can happen 24 hours a day, so you know, sort of sleepless nights. Now in this same district, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch through the night over their flock, when suddenly there stood before them an angel of the Lord, and the splendour of the Lord shone round them. They were terror-stricken, but the angel said, Do not be afraid, I have good news for you. There is great joy coming to the whole people. Today, in the city of David, a deliverer has been born to you. The Messiah, the Lord. And this is your sign. You will find a baby lying wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. All at once there was with the angel a great company of the heavenly hosts singing the praises of God. Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth his peace for men on whom his favour rests. After the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Come, we must go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us.
I'm here with Roy Threadgold, Kylie's father now, in um, a superb, big, airy barn. Roy, can you tell us what usually happens in this barn? On this day, it's usually got about 200 people in singing merry carols. Today, it's got us and the cows, sadly, but um, we hope this is going to be a lovely number watching. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. I mean, I remember carols in the cowshed services where the, the wind has howled round here, rain has poured down, but we have, have been sheltering inside the, this barn, rather like your, your animals are today. Yes. Um, and we sing carols, we worship, and, and it's a very special occasion, isn't it? It certainly is. I mean, people come from miles to, to this. It's like their highlight of their Christmas. Um, to think it was actually put on in the first place because everything sort of finished at Christmas Day and there was just this empty business and we know that Christmas should go on 12 days afterwards anyway. <laughs> um, so we, we, put, uh, we started this over 30 years ago now and uh, as I say, we get a, a regular, around 200 people with a live band and yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. It is. And I think one of the very special parts of the service is that it reminds everybody when we're sheltering in there of the shelter that Mary and Joseph found um, in something like a barn or a stable or a cave um, amidst animals um, just as we have here. And after that journey um, from Nazareth to Bethlehem, what a relief it must have been to, to have found that shelter and find somewhere where they could lay their heads um, and sleep. And we're now going to sing about that in our next carol, Silent Night.
And right, here we are in a different part of barn, this time uh, surrounded by goats. You were just telling me the favourite question that you've had from a visitor regarding your goats. Oh, absolutely. The number of people who come and uh, see our billy goat there and say, Oh, is it pregnant? <laughs> and I have to say, I, I do hope so, because we're millionaires. <laughs> But um, no, that is, uh, it's all show, isn't it, fella? <laughs> <laughs> Just very well fed, Yes. Hey? Yes, yeah. Hello. Um, I think one of the, the things that um, always takes me back to the Christmas story here is, is standing by the manger. Mm. Um, because we know that when Mary and Joseph settled in, in their stable, in their barn, um, it was where the baby Jesus was born. And of course, Mary hadn't got a cot, she hadn't got a pram, but there was a manger. Mm. Um, and she laid the baby in the manger in the warmth of the, probably the straw and the hay, as we see here. And not only was that just something brilliant with regards to adapting to what was there, but of course, when the shepherds visited, it was the sign that they were looking for. The angels had told them that they would see the baby lying in a manger and there it was. We're going to hear of that part of the, the story, the Christmas story from Luke's Gospel again and then sing one of the favourite Christmas carols, Away in a Manger. So they went with all speed and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby was lying in the manger. When they saw him, they recounted what they had been told about the child and all who heard were astonished at what the shepherds had said. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered over them. Meanwhile, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for what they had heard and seen. It had all happened as they had been told. chaplain, one of the most special moments of carols in the cowshed to me 
is when all 200 people go quiet, there's a hush, and we all join together in prayer. I invite you now, wherever you are watching this, to perhaps share in a few moments of prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, at Christmas we remember that your son, Jesus, was born as a human being. Renew us in the image of your son. At Christmas we remember that there was no room for your son at the inn. Protect with love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. At Christmas we remember that your son came to bring light to a suffering world. In this pandemic, hold in your hand all who are suffering, all who are in pain, fear or distress. Hold especially those known personally to us. We pray for all who are caring for the sick in homes, care homes and hospitals. At Christmas we remember that the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Let us strive for peace. Lord, strengthen and inspire all those working for justice in the world. At Christmas, we remember that strangers found a new holy family. Lord, bless our homes, our families, and all whom we love. Amen. You might like to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
every game that goes in in terms of uh, disasters, but they are there on the ground to promote uh, and uh, build sustainable agriculture, and protect the ecology, yes, <laughs> and also to build up a business um, framework so that the African farmers can produce efficiently and market and therefore get an income which is in many cases is very difficult in Africa because you know farming is difficult anywhere at times but um, we don't have hordes of locusts coming here for example which has been a terrible thing in Africa this year so with the more help they can get the better and, and have uh, something that they can keep going year after year, sustain and keep the income coming in and educate their children, they can feed their families. So that is so important work that Farm Africa does. Farm Africa employs the Goat Revolving Scheme model, where two to three female goats are given to selected members of the group on the basis that they will pass on these goats to another member of the group once they kid. And this creates a cycle of improved prosperity. And for many of the women, this is the first property they have owned on their own. Farm Africa helps the women to crossbreed these local female goats with improved breeds of bugs to produce crossbreeds, which produce more milk and meat than the local goats. By taking a series of portraits of the goats, I try to honor the role they were playing in empowering women. Anna kindly let Mlomo Gil inside her dark house, where I could take a striking portrait of his face against an almost black backdrop. Lomogil was the first of many goats whose portraits I took while visiting Uganda and Ethiopia. Empowering a woman means empowering her children and the entire household too. And that's what Farm Africa strives to do.
Carol's in the cow shed. We normally have quite a big scratch band for the occasion, but today I'm really pleased to be joined by Nicola and Ella and Thomas as a representation of those who would normally be here. We're going to play for you Compressed Carols by kind permission of Phoenix Music. Um, it's a collection of different carols all rolled into one. See how many you can count. I'll tell you if you got them right at the end. Sing along if you dare. ones by my calculation, three of which have appeared at least twice. I hope you enjoyed our music. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.